pleasant that you're here. But can we unify this morning? Can we lift our hands if we're able to? And can you invite the presence of God in this morning? Let's unify right now. God, we love you, Father. Oh, we need your presence this morning, God. We've come together in unity, God. I pray blessings over this congregation this morning, God. Thank you for getting us here this morning, God. Come on, church. Can you clap your hands in the Lord right now? Can you lift your voices right now? God, you're the highest of the most highest. For there is no other name but the name of Jesus. There's only one God, and his name is Jesus. Come on, church. I think we can do better than that. He deserves our worship this morning. Hallelujah, God. Lord, saturate your power this morning. Let us fill your presence this morning. Come on, church. Can we together in unity? Can we worship the Lord this morning? In Jesus' name. All I 
God, how many are thankful this morning, amen, that God is able to take up all the pieces, amen, and put them back together again, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, amen, it's not what we've done, it's what he's done, praise God, we submit, we surrender to him, but he is the one, he's the great restorer here today, praise God, one more time, let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise, he is worthy, he is worthy, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. Again, what an honor to be together in the house of the Lord. Amen. We want to prepare to give our, uh, receive our offering today as we give unto the Lord this morning. Amen. Don't forget, this is also the, we're receiving our Mother's Memorial offering as well. Uh, if you have, have that this morning, if you'll make sure it is marked on your check or on the envelope, uh, make sure that it will go to Mother's Memorial. Uh, there is also an online tab. If you'd like to give online, that is also an option. Amen. Together, let's make our declaration. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing, there's not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God. Perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. to be 
You were waiting where I left myself. You were there. You never left. You never forsake me. All the pieces that were shattered on the ground, you came to where I was and you put it back together again. You found me. You found me broken and you built me back into what you wanted me to be. You know the way that I take. You know every step that I make. You know how hard it is on this journey of life. You know my struggles. You know my tears. You know my brokenness. And you put me back together again. That's why I wanted to sing this one more time. You will never leave me alone. I am yours. you belong to me you will never ever fit into a world that did not create your very being I have created you I have designed you I have molded you to what I want you to be I have plans for you it is to prosper I want good for you I do not want evil for you I will never leave you I will be here waiting when you are ready to return I shall still be here I love you I want to save you I want to be with you I want communion with you I want you to love me I want you to feel me. I am your protector. I am your guide. I'm your deliverer. I'm your comfort. I'm everything you need. You will not find it anywhere else. I am yours forever. And when I was singing this song and I said, I am yours forever, the Lord returned it back and said, I am yours forever. I am yours forever. I am your savior. I'm your father. I'm your friend. I'm your comfort. I am yours. All you have to do is say yes. All you have to do is say yes. I am yours Satan I rebuke you in the name of Jesus you have no place here your words shall be silent in this room you cannot convince anyone that they do not belong to the God Almighty that he created them I speak to you in the name of Jesus release them into peace release them into the powerful mind of Christ we have power over you we have been given power over you and I command you to leave this building in the name of Jesus shout with a voice of freedom shout with a voice of victory God is in control I want you to tell the church right now we are yours forever this church is yours forever we give ourselves to you I'm telling you, it is simple as Sunday school. It is simple as Sunday school. We are children of God. All we have to do is worship, and he goes and fights for us. All we have to do is praise him, and he fights the war for us. How many wants a God like that? Leading the way. Hallelujah. He orders our steps. He puts the light into our path. He lights the way. I don't have to sell him here this morning. Most of you know he is good. He is great. He's been faithful to me. He has never left. When I failed him, he wasn't like people that talked about me and made me feel like I was worthless. He was not like that. He wasn't like the, the voices of man and the voices of enemy says, you'll never be anything because of this. No, God was saying, just come back into my arms. Just come on back. 
I want time with you. I want to fix it. I'm the only one that can. I see it. He sees we're not perfect. But he wants us to just make the decision and the commitment. I am yours forever. Use me for your glory. Help me to hear your voice louder than anything in this world. And let me be what you created to me, me to be. God is truly trying to take us to another level in him. Because he is preparing a way. There are going to be people, just like has been prophesied, that's going to come into this church. And I'm going to tell you this. They're expecting a move of God. They're not expecting something normal. So don't worry about being normal. They're not expecting people just to sit there and act like, well, I just put in my two cents. I made it. I checked in. I've, I've attended. No. They want to see a people that says, I need you. Just like the sinner on the street that don't know him. I need him. I need him. We are all equal in his eyes. There is none greater than the other. We all need him. Let them know it's a safe place to come into. Let them know that there's love. The love of Jesus is in the house. The love and mercy and grace is overflowing. And the glory of God fills the temple. He we're moving on to the next song I'm telling you I love him I love him when I say I love you Jesus there is a power that flows through my veins there's nothing like it I had someone tell me the other day they said you know what don't try to compare him to the greatest drug in the world. Don't try to compare him to, to alcohol or, or sex or whatever else that gets you high in this world that brings some kind of joy to you. Even the moment that I saw my baby for the first time, I cannot compare it. There is nothing that's, that is even opposite to it. There is a connection and a joy and a peace when the Spirit of God the one who loves me more than you could ever imagine begins to make me feel that I am his and that he loves me. He wants to bring somebody in this house back to life. Be restored in the name of Jesus. You are worthy because he says you're worthy. And I believe that God is going to bring that in because the enemy is no longer here. He is not here. He cannot speak to any of you, so you can't use it as an excuse. God is in the house, and he's working. Church, worship him for that. He is good. Thank you, Jesus. No longer I who in me for I've been born again my heart is free the hope of heaven before me the grave behind hallelujah you brought me back to life I won't forget the moment I heard you call
guilty I'll point to the price you pay When something says I'm not worthy I'll point to that empty grave Just like Lazarus Oh, you brought me back to life No longer I who live But Christ in me For I've been born again My heart is free The hope of heaven before me The grave behind Hallelujah You brought me back to life When something says I am guilty I'll point to the price you pay When something says I'm not worthy I'll point to that empty grave Just like Lazarus Oh, you brought me back to life No longer I who live But Christ in me
was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Come on, I don't want to interrupt anybody that's not, that's in the midst of this. Come on, come on, it don't matter. Come on up here. All right. I want you to scream with everything you have with the music really, really low. We're going to go to that verse one more time. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Say that again. I'm chosen. I am chosen. Say it like you mean it. because we're getting ready for the word but I want you to understand the reason I had these young people to come up Lindsay in your father's house there's a place for you in your father's house there's a place for you Kaylin in the house of God there's a place for you there's revival for you there's restoration for you there's anointing for you in your father's house there's a place for you you belong you belong in Jesus name 
Oh, in the Father's house, Jackson, you're not too young. He sees, he sees a knight. He's an armor God. He has you. He's going to protect you. He's going to be with you. The Holy Ghost is already in you. You belong in the name of Jesus in the Father's house. There's a place for you. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you thankful that these young people can always know that in the Father's house, there's a place. He says who I am, not the world. He says who I am. I'm telling you, there's a need in this house for the hyphen group, for the young people. I'm going to tell you, if you don't understand the war that we're in in a spiritual sense, if you don't understand the way the world is reaching for these young people, if you did understand, you would stay on your knees. You would call out their name every day. You would say, God, put a hedge of protection around every single one of them. They're walking into a war zone. The enemy is coming at them. He's coming at them. He does not want them to be warriors of Christ. He does not want them to be established. He does not want them to be grounded. He does not want them to be warriors. You think you just come here to worship. You think you just come here sometimes to get encouraged. But I'm going to tell you, like I said somebody the other day, it's time that we stop just coming for the buffet. Somebody else pre prepared the message. Somebody else prepared the prayers. Somebody else prepared the way. And you just come and eat and eat and eat. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Oh, that was real good. Let me go home. And when I come back, you have another one prepared for me. And let me just enjoy it. I'm going to tell you, you better be ready yourself. You better be ready yourself. You better be in the Word of God. You better be grounded. You better be in here worshiping. You better be in here thanking God that He saved your soul. I'm going to tell you, it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of heaven and hell. This is a serious situation. In the name of Jesus, wake up our minds. Wake up our spirits. People are going to hell every day. People are committing suicide right next door to you. People that you walk by, they are so hungry. If they knew how to, they would say, speak to me and tell me what to do. I'm hurting. I'm lost. Does he really heal you? Because I'm going to tell you, some of you don't look real comforted. Some of you don't look like you're full of joy. You're not going to sell this message very good if you don't get full of the love of Jesus. If you don't get filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. If you don't get filled with the love of Jesus. They will not believe you that he can change their lives. It's a truth, Sister Marilyn. When you walk through Tyson's, I know you want the Lord to heal you. He's going to do it. I don't care what anybody says. He's going to do it. And there is going to be a revival in Tyson's. We've claimed it. I don't care what the enemy says. And when they see it, it's not for you. You believe him anyway. If you go to heaven and you, and you live just like that your whole life, you're not going to stop loving him. You're going to believe he could have healed you and you understand because your relationship with him. But he's not healing you for you. He's healing her for the unbelievers. He's healing her so that they can find Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. Let you shine through me, Jesus. Let you work through me, Jesus. It's almost home time. It's just about home time. I can see him. He's coming. Yes, I've heard about it my whole life, but I'm telling you, we better get serious because he's coming. I can see the doors are opened and I can see him begging and beckoning them to come. And he's saying, my body the body of Christ that I have in each of you. I'm asking you, 
to be a light to this world and to show the gospel of Jesus Christ that all men would come to know me that is his desire that all men would come to know nobody's got to convince me how good this life is because I know I've experienced it he is a good God he's a good God can we just take one minute to have nothing else on your mind I want I don't care if you can't lift them up high just put both hands in the air somehow I don't care if they're on your lap just raise them to him Lord I surrender I surrender my understanding to you because I don't know everything I surrender God all the thoughts that I have and I put them under submission to you God and Lord, I pray that you forgive me of anything that there may be in my heart and in my soul, God. I want to be right and clean before you, God. Help me to be an instrument for your glory. And Jesus, help us receive your word as Brother Rob comes forth right now. We love your word, God. We love your word, God. Anoint it and let us be changed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We can continue in praise. Amen. We can continue in worship right now. Amen. Amen. I wonder if we can let out a shout of praise in this place. Amen. I wonder if we can shake the foundations of hell in this place this morning. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before we get started this morning in my message, uh, I feel that there's, there's a breaking in the spirit. Amen. And I'm not talking about the spirit breaking, but breaking in the spirit. What I mean by that, I believe there are chains that are being broken this morning in this place. Amen. And, and the chain that comes in my mind, that's in my spirit that I feel so strong, is the generational curses. Amen. Amen. We, we want to know why life is so difficult sometimes, but sometimes it's not your fault. Young people, it's not your fault. Amen. Unfortunately, you were blessed with some things that you wish you didn't have. And those things will hold on to you until God takes them. Amen. I, I look at my children and I look at their lives and, man, I'm like, they act so much like me in some ways. And, and then some ways they don't. But I'm like, man, I remember that I was once an, an alcoholic and I was once addicted to to some drugs and I was once a, a wild person in my younger days but God has delivered me but the thing is is that those traits will flow down to the next generation amen so I wonder right now why the spirit is still here dwelling so strongly amen why don't you families get together I want my boys to come up here I'm gonna pray with you but I feel like we need to break some chains in this place. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Our kids are worth it, amen. The Bible says that, that he will break the bondage, amen, that, that he can take this from us, amen. Our God is able and he is willing, amen. We, we need to do this for our children. We need to do this for our families. Amen. It's not anything that you and I have done. This is just something that's it's worldly. 
I mean, how many of you believe with me? Why don't we just let God know today that we need him to break some things in our lives, that we need him to break some curses that have been, that been hanging around a little too long, some, some bonds that have been just hanging out. That they need to be broken today in the spirit. I mean, you want revival. We need to break these chains. We want to see our family saved. We need to break the things that have us bound. I mean, can we pray? Can we pray right now? Can we ask God right now in the name of Jesus? Come on, church, you can do better than that. Come on, church, won't you scream out to God? Amen, won't you reach his throne this morning? Won't you tell God what you need? Come on, church. Oh, these chains need to be broken. We have dealt with them long enough. We have, we have carried these chains for long enough. We need to let the God we serve break them. Amen, your family's worth it. Amen, your lost loved ones are worth it. Amen. We need to start being con convicted in our spirits for our loved ones, for our families. Amen. Amen, how many have a lost loved one right now? Amen, I can think of so many. I, I don't have enough hands to raise the, of the lost loved ones that I have in my family. Amen, but I believe we serve a God that is able, amen, and that is willing today. Amen. To move upon every one of these needs. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You can continue praying. Amen. Everyone else, you can return back to your seats. Amen. 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 I love what I feel here in this place. Amen. I believe there is a shift in the spirit, Pastor. Uh, I do believe that. I, I believe that God is is moving amen the atmosphere is changing uh, uh, god is fixing to do a mighty work and amen i i just want to be along for the ride amen i don't want to miss out amen spiritually for what god is wanting to do in this place amen uh real quickly before i get into the word there's there's been something that's been god is a pastor spoke wednesday and god just kind of spoke to me just it's he's real simple the simplicity of God is, is what he gave me. And, amen. Loving God and, and living for God is easy. It really is. We, we as a church, we make it way more complicated than what it is. Amen. We, we make this way more complicated than it needs to be. The, the main things we need to know is that God loves us. Amen. There's nothing that you can do. There's no, there's no, 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 nothing that you can't do. There's nothing that, how, there's no, I can't talk this morning. It doesn't matter how far you go away from God. His love for you never changes. Amen. Do you agree with me this morning about that? God loves you. 
Amen. He loves me just as much as he loves a person across the street. He loves me just like he loves a homeless person. It doesn't matter. God loves us all the same. I remember I, I, I was told one time that the driver of the, the plane that went into the, the Twin Towers, God loved that person just as much as he loves me. And that's, that's hard for us to concept how much God does love us. And it doesn't matter of who we are or how we were raised or our upbringing or any of those things. God still loves us. It's easy to love God. I mean, it's easy. He's simple to love. He is simple to follow. God will do anything for us. His word says he'll never leave us or forsake us. Amen. But he'll go with us into the end of the world. I mean, that is simple. It's so simple for us to love him today and to live for him. Amen. Isn't he wonderful today? Amen. That he doesn't make it complicated, but even though the, even though the Bible says the deep things of God, he is so confound, he's so wise that we can never understand what he, what, he, what he thinks or what he says. We don't understand his thoughts or his ways, but yet he humbles himself to be able to dwell with people like you and I. Amen. It's amazing to me how, how easy he makes it for us to love him. Amen. Um, he's good to us. Amen. You're not just here because you wanted to be here this morning, but you're here because it's been orchestrated. Amen. Amen. How many believe that every step that you take is orchestrated by God? Amen. Amen. So if you're here today, it's because God has allowed you to be here today. God has made a path for you to be in his presence this morning. Jesus has allowed you to feel his presence this morning. Amen. You're only here because he has made it a way for you. It's only because of Jesus that you were able to leave your house or able to make a way to be here this morning. It's only because of Jesus that we have what we have. It's only because of him that, that we're able to breathe this morning and be able to have our being. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? It's only because of Jesus that we're here today in this spot, in this moment of time. Amen. When we try to figure it out, amen. God is in control of every part of our lives. Amen. That is hard for me to comprehend. It is hard for me to, to grasp that thought that God is in total control of everything. Even though I think I am. Amen. Even though I think I'm in control of some things in my life, reality is God is in total control. And if he wanted to show his control, he could do it at any time. Amen. God is gracious. Amen. 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 We need to quit acting like we're in control and realize that it's only because of him, amen, that we're able to have our being and that we're able to be here in the house of the Lord. It is a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It is a privilege to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is a privilege to feel the presence of God. Amen. What we felt this morning in this place, not many people has ever felt it before. I'm so blessed to be able to feel the presence of God. God. Jesus is good to us. Amen. Amen. I want to go to the word this morning. I don't have a real long word today, but amen. In, in Philippians 1 and 6, amen. Or 1 and 6. Did I tell you 16? I may have messed up. It's being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work in you will per perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to speak this morning on, on some crazy topic that came to my mind. It's won't he do it? Amen. Can we pray right now? I, I, I need the anointing this morning in this place. Amen. Look, look at me. I'm, I'm nobody special today. I, I have my flaws, and, and I, I have my down, my, my, I have issues, amen? I just need God to move today, through me today. Lord, we love you. 
We thank you, God, that you're, that you're here, Lord, that your presence is here. Lord, we just ask for the anointing to flow today. Lord, allow it to flow through me. Lord, fix, fix this broken vessel just one more time for your glory. Lord, let your word go forth, God, and let it, let it sink into the hearts and the ears of the people in the congregation and those watching online. Lord, move upon your people today. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you are faithful. We're thankful that you are easy to love, and Lord, we're thankful thankful that you're there for us today and we give you the praise and the honor and everybody say in Jesus name amen can we magnify him one more time as you're being seated Lord, we thank you, Jesus. amen what a presence this morning amen I said this the other week but <clears throat> I am the first generation Pentecostal in my family I mean, I'm thankful for that, obviously. But it's hard for me because I think of the rest of my family, how they're not in church. But I believe the same God that, that made a way for me will make a way for them. Amen. And, and, and as far as the generational curses, you know, it, I still struggle with things from my, that my parents had in their spirits, I guess you can say. Amen. And, and it's something that you have to learn to, to combat and to fight. Amen. Now, God will break those, but the enemy, he's clever. And he will always try to bring those things back around and, and try to remind you of where you came from and, and how your parents were raised and where they're from. And I mean, I cannot tell you today that God is he's faithful. Amen. And he, he is gracious today. It's only by the grace of God that, that I'm here today. Amen. Be able to speak to you. And I, I'm so thankful for him. Amen. But even in the midst of everything, today I felt a heaviness in the spirit. I, I felt like there's a lot of, there's a heavy spirit in the house. I feel like people are struggling. There's a lot of uh, circumstances that are going on in people's lives. People are struggling spiritually, struggling financially, struggling just to, to make life, amen, to, to just going forward. We, we hear stories of of like suicides and and the the, uh, the outrageous number of addicts and it just seems like there's no end to any of these numbers and and it seems like the statistics are not getting any lower amen but in the midst of everything that's going on god is still working Amen. In the midst of your dilemma, in the midst of your trial, in the midst of whatever you're facing, please know this morning that God is still moving. I mean, God is still working. God hasn't left you out to dry. He hasn't left you alone, but he is still working in the midst of your trials. Amen. The Lord spoke to me in a clear and very understandable word. And, and I'm thankful for the word that the Lord speaks. Amen. He knows exactly what we need in the time that we need it. Amen. I'm thankful today that, that, that he is faithful to me. Being confident of this very thing, he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So basically what that says is whatever God has told you that he's going to do, he's going to continue to do it. Amen. If it hasn't come to pass yet, it's going to happen. Amen. Because I haven't seen Jesus Christ yet. He hasn't showed up yet. Amen. And I'm hoping he does soon because I would love just to go home and, and just live life in heaven. Then I ain't got to pay bills. Amen. I ain't got to buy groceries. Amen. I hope I can just take my fishing pole with me. Amen. Amen. I don't know if there's ponds up there or what, but I feel like the desires of my heart, I'm going to be able to take my pole with me. And my dog. I'm taking my dog with me. <laughs> Amen. Oh, bless him. <laughs> Amen. Won't he do it? Amen. I'm telling you this morning that we serve a God that is able. And I don't know who I'm speaking to or if it's just one person or if it's 50 this morning. God is working in your life. And he's not done, amen. I, I, like I said a minute ago, I, I know there's a lot of things happening in this world today. And I know that, that there's a lot of circumstances in your life. And you feel like you've done everything you can do. Let me tell you, God is not working. He's not done moving. He's not done healing. God's not done giving the Holy Ghost. God's not done giving remission of sins. God is still working. Revival isn't finished yet, amen. This isn't the end, but this is just the beginning. God. 
God is fixing to do something in this place, amen, that's going to blow our minds. God is moving. It may not look like he's moving in the chaos and everything out in the world, but rest is sure that God is going to do it. Amen. Won't he do it? Amen. It may not look like God is moving today in this times and the, and the things that are going on in the world, but he still listens to your prayers. He knows exactly how many days you've been fasting. Nothing that you're doing is going unnoticed by God. He takes notes very carefully. He knows everything that you're doing and every sacrifice that you're making. But let you remind you this morning, even in the midst of your chaos, he will do it. Amen. God is not done yet. Sunday by Sunday, day by day. Wednesday or by Wednesday, we are gaining ground on the enemy. I mean, you may not see it in the physical world, but in the spiritual world, we're pushing back the darkness. Amen. We're pushing them out of this city, out of your homes, out of your circumstances. How many of you agree with me this morning that we're pushing back the darkness? Amen. I don't think I have enough. I don't have enough with me this morning. How many of you believe today that we're pushing back the darkness upon our city? Amen. Amen. Greater things are coming to this city. Greater things are going to happen in your family. I mean, declare that right now. <laughs> Greater things are fixing to happen in your family. Amen. Can we declare that in the name of Jesus? Amen. Won't he do it? We haven't seen anything yet. Amen. I can't wait till God just blows our mind. I'm excited about what he's been doing. I'm excited about what I've seen. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing in this church. But I'm ready for my mind to be blown. Amen. By something miraculous in the spiritual world. Amen. Not only is God moving in our lives, but God has been moving in this church. Amen. I, just over the past, I don't know, Pastor, it's been over the past few months, it just seemed like God is just, I mean, he's just elevating the church. Amen. He's just elevating the saints. He's just moving upon the people in the church. Amen. We've seen like these young people flooding to the altars every day. Don't ever leave the altars, kids or young people. I mean, I, I love to see them up here praying. I love to see God moving upon these young people. Amen. We are blessed. We are blessed with some wonderful young kids. They're not even kids anymore, but these teenagers and adults. Amen. We're blessed with the best. Amen. We have seen people receiving healings. Amen. But I, I'm claiming more healings in the name of Jesus. People receiving blessings today. Amen. I, I've seen God move in so many people's lives here in this church. Amen. But again, it's only just the beginning of what God wants to do. God is wanting to move in a mighty way in this place. God is wanting to move in a mighty way in your life and in your family today. Amen. We don't need to settle with just what's going on right now but I don't I don't want to limit God but I want to see God just continue to elevate as high as he wants to take the church amen Jesus is not done working in your life I'm here to declare today that Jesus is not done with you yet how many believe that right now that Jesus isn't done with you yet amen that he's not done with where you're at that there's more for you that Jesus is going to do greater things in your life and greater things that you will do for the kingdom amen I believe that today amen I don't believe that God is done with me I don't believe that God is done with you. Amen. In John 14 and 12, it says, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. If we can just take a hold of that scripture and, and understand the, the placement of that scripture in time, and, and that's, that's a bold statement that, you, that we'll be able to do more than what he did. Amen. I'm ready to see the healings. I'm ready to see the miraculous. I mean, I, I'm ready just to walk by somebody and just my shadow touching someone heals. And not, not because of me, but because of the spirit that dwells inside of me. Amen. God has given us power. Amen. He has given us power over the enemy. And we live such a defeated people. 
We're so depressed. We're so oppressed. Amen. We let the simple things in life tear us down. But I'm here to tell you today, you have the power of God dwelling inside of you. You have the strongest thing on this side of heaven dwelling inside of you, and we mope around defeated. I don't know about you, but I am not a defeated person. Amen. Amen. We're better than that. God has dealt, dealt with us. God has given us things that we're able to beat the enemy, defeat him. We're able to heal the sick, open the blinded eyes, cleanse the deaf ears. I mean, God has given us power today. God, use me. God, use me today. God, use us. God, use this church. God, dwell inside of us. Allow us to be allowed into the laws. Allow us to heal the sick today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Amen. Hey Amen. If we can just allow the things of the world to leave us and allow more of Him to come in to our lives. Amen. I there ain't no telling what we can do in this town. I, I'm here today and I'm, I'm speaking very transparently, but there's some things I need to remove in my life. Amen. There are some things I need to take out of that. And they're not like bad things. I'm not talking about I'm over here doing bad things, but they're things that take up my time to where I don't give enough time to Him. Amen. I need to allow more of Him in my life. I need to allow more of that power to dwell inside of me and to push some things away in this world. Amen. I have a lost family that needs saved. I got a brother and sister that need to be baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I have friends and family today that need to be baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I walk with guys at work every day. Amen. And none of them know the Lord like I do, except for Daniel. He's the only one. Amen. Thank you for Daniel. Amen. <laughs> he, keeps, he keeps me sane. Amen. He's like the, uh, the thorn in my side. Never mind. <laughs> he's more... <laughs> he's, he's more like... Uh, he, keeps me, he keeps me good. Let's put it that way. He's my little angel on my right shoulder. Amen. I'm thankful for my job and thankful Daniel works with me. But, I mean, we walk around people that are so defeated, and, and it's sad. And we have a couple of gentlemen that we work with that you can just see they're taking this path down the road that, that I see and I know that, like, man, that's not the path you need to take. And it, it feels like there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm helpless, and, yes, and it's not me that needs to do the work, though. I just need to be a willing vessel. God, God will do it. I, I just need God to sh have the open the doors of opportunity for me, and then I need to be prepared to be able to walk through that door of opportunity. I mean, if we're, we're all able to get to that place where we can just allow God to move, amen. Amen. Won't he do it, though? <laughs> Won't he do it? I mean, we serve a God that raises people from the dead. We serve a God that can heal the blind in an instant and, and open the dead ear. We serve a God that, that can bring dry bones back together with just, with just a word. We serve a powerful God today. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Another version says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. He declares it. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a good, to give you a future and hope. Amen. God's not done with you yet. Amen. Psalms 31 and 19 says, Oh, how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought them for them that, that trust in thee before the sons of men. Another version says this, Oh, how abundant is your goodness. Isn't he good? Which you have stored up for those who fear you and, and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children and the children of mankind. Amen. God has stored up goodness for those who take refuge in him. 
And there's nothing wrong in trusting in God. I mean, you can't go wrong if you put your trust in Him. Amen. Yeah, you may be going through a financial struggle. Trust God. He won't leave you hanging. I promise you. you. You may be in a point in a crossroads in your life. Why don't you put your trust in Him today and allow Him to show you how great He really is? Amen. I don't know what everyone's facing today, but I knew one. I do know this, that God has the best intent for your life. And you may not think it at this moment. You may be thinking, there's no way God has this for good. But I'm telling you, and I, I promise you today, that God's intent is for good in your life. Amen. Amen. If the musicians will come, I'm, I'm, com I'm coming to a close. <clears throat> but in Philippians, back in the beginning of my scripture, Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good a work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to tell the church this morning that God is not done here yet. He isn't. I mean, would you agree with me? God's not done here yet. I mean, we're going to fill this church up. Not, not us, we. God is going to fill this church. God is going to fill this church up. Amen. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see God move in a mighty way. Amen. In this place. And guess what? God's not done with you either. Amen. Be confident. Don't let the circumstances of this world take away the confidence that God has in you. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to tell you that you're never going to be good enough. Or that you're never going to be able to do what God has you for you to do one of the biggest thing i struggle with and it was spoke to me last week is me accepting what god wants me to do i mean i, I can be on my sheet of glass right now you can see right into my soul i struggle with who i am spiritually and that's normal right there are some people that are super confident i'm not a confident person Amen. Confidence is not a trait that I have. I, I cower. Amen. But, the brothers, I can't even pronounce his name. What's it? Ranja? Karanja? Amen. He told me in his first words, he says, you've been struggling with this. And he's right. I do struggle with what I'm called to do. Is that wrong? Yeah, absolutely. Am I going to hell for it? No. But God has a purpose for me. And I need to be willing and available and accept what God has for me. How many are you? How many of you are like that this morning? How many of you this morning, God has spoken to you and you know you have a special calling and anointing in your life? But you don't accept it. Huh? Amen? You are good enough. You are capable. You are able to do what God has want, what He wants you to do. Now me? Probably not. <laughs> Just kidding. But I need to be available for Him. God, I need you to do greater things in my life. What about you this morning? Do you need God to do greater in your life? Amen. Won't he do it? If you show yourself available, if you let yourself be available to him, guess what? God is going to show himself faithful to you. God is not done. Don't allow yourself to be discouraged by the way things are going. But understand this, that God will perform his work in you until he returns. The Bible says that he will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. What a promise, right? <laughs> what a promise. I mean, I open the altars this morning. For all the ones who are struggling with your calling. I mean, this altar is for you today. For all those that are struggling with your hurting, this altar is here for you today. 
I mean, for those who are struggling with whatever circumstances you're facing, your trials, your sickness, your healing, whatever it is, guess what? This altar is here for you today. Amen. I'm here to encourage you this morning that God has his best intentions for you. That God wants to heal you. That God wants to deliver you. That God wants you to to live your best life. That God wants you to to reach the lost. That God wants you to to reach the sick and and to heal them. God wants you to do all that. Amen. So would you stand with me this, this morning? These altars are open for you. Amen. These these altars are open today. Why don't you make yourself willing? Amen. Why don't you make yourself available today? Amen. He will do it. God will heal your family. God will save the lost. All those lost loved ones in your life, God, God, he's going to do it. But we have to make ourselves available for him. We need to make ourselves ready for what God wants to do. God, God wants to take us up here. Amen. But I need to be ready for God to elevate. Amen. Let us pray this morning in Jesus' name. This is a house of worship.